Thanks for joining us. I'm Laura Beth Ezel for HXGN TV. And today we have Pat Brown, who is the Electric Power Research Institute Technical Executive. Now, she's joining us to share EPRI's vision to minimize outage effects, cut maintenance cost, and better operate the power grid. So, Pat, I appreciate you taking the time to join us today. Sure. So, Pat is here to explain EPRI's initiative to create an industry architecture for network model management and why this is important important for electric utilities today. So first, Pat, just tell us a little bit about the Electric Power Research Institute and your role there. So EPRI, the Electric Power mm -hmm. Research Institute, is a U.S. not-for-profit that does applied collaborative research. It has a larger, larger presence in the U.S. Than, mm -hmm. than overseas, but has members from around the world. Within EPRI, there are a number of sectors. The one that I work for is power delivery, and within that I work for the um, information and communication technology program, where I do uh, application integration and data management kind of activities. Okay, so can you tell us what EPRI is working on in creating you know, a standards-based industry architecture for network model management? So, we have been working for, gosh, about five years now in the domain of um, improving network model management inside of the utility. Mm -hmm. When folks think about data exchange standards for network model data, they tend to think of utility to utility, especially mm -hmm. in the transmission domain. But we've been working on how a utility internal to itself mm -hmm. can actually better manage this network model data, which is pretty difficult to manage mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that consumers in the planning protection operations um, domains, those applications that run network analysis functions, get exactly what they need as starting points for their power flows. Okay, so why is this important for electric utilities and, and how, will, how will they benefit from this and how they operate? So for a very long time in transmission, there has been a need to simulate grid behavior as the system was planned, as right. protection was designed, as it was operated. And what we're seeing is that more and more the need to be able to do those sorts of things is appearing in distribution, largely because of the fact that we are seeing increasing penetrations of distributed energy resources, so no longer is distribution just simply a uh, pipe to the consumer, all you have to do is right. build the pipe big enough. It's not that way, we have mm -hmm. behavior going on on those feeders that makes it really important to simulate that behavior. So simulations that are power flow based need good network model data. So that's mm -hmm. how we arrive at the point of needing to manage it effectively. Okay, so what are some real world examples of this? <laughs> if you're talking about real world examples of the problem, they abound right, right? at all <laughs> transmission right. and distribution utilities. Um, Transmission is interesting in as much as the silos are very fixed. Every You could walk into any transmission utility and essentially the situation is much the same. Distribution is just much more of the Wild West, however, mm -hmm. um, with far more tools, far different practices, different tools being used in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, in distribution, I would say, kind of leading edge utilities are really recognizing the need to be able to get a handle on this data, whereas in transmission, mm -hmm. leading utilities are actually designing and implementing solutions at this time. 10 years right. ago, they realized they had the problem. Right, okay, okay. So Hexagon's G technology helps utilities maintain a single source of truth for the network and connectivity. What role can we as a vendor play in this effort? So if you look at what we're trying to do, it is a industry architecture that's standards-based that defines those information exchanges between applications. And when we say applications, are we talking about one group or being able to connect uh, with other groups exactly, around you? Exactly, across okay. the enterprise. So we are talking, typical consumers are planning and protection tools um, or DMSs, ADMSs, OMS systems, that kind of thing. Typical sources, oh my gosh, everything from uh, load projection, load management systems to GISs to asset management systems. So we have lots of sources, we have lots of consumers, and the goal is to make it so that information coming into or going out of any of those applications um, can adhere to a standard 
definition of the data that is being exchanged. Um, and if we can get to a point, and I think we can from what we've learned in transmission, where those data exchanges are, are understood, where their content is described by the common information model, then we'll be in a position where vendors will be able to, to, to look at those standard data exchanges and go, yeah, I'll put an interface on my tool that produces data in that format or reads data in that format. And if you look at kind of the purpose of the, of the project, of the architecture, you know, it is to make it so that utilities can manage their own data better. If we can get to a place where vendors put those standards-based interfaces on their tools and utilities can buy those tools, utilities will be in a spot where their data management responsibilities are really something easy to accomplish instead of something one-off and, and just awkward. Very so good. a vendor could right. implement an interface, help us understand whether or not we've got the common definition right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, both of those things. Okay, so we've worked with a utility like Snow, Snohomish Public Utility District in Washington uh, to ensure that data fed from their GIS into their ADMS in, is operations ready. So how can utilities help support your effort? Well, a couple of things pop to mind. Um, one obvious one is they could join our project. We currently have eight utilities that are, are helping us mm -hmm. in this endeavor. But I think probably more importantly, if a utility will kind of step up to the plate and understand that it's, it's their responsibility to, to define data, manage that ha data management that happens between mm -hmm. silos. Right. You know, in a silo, it's a combination. You've got your vendor tool, they design, they design the schema, the functionality, mm -hmm. utility deploys it, what they put in it is their choice, what they use it for is their choice. So there's sort of a shared responsibility. But when you get to that mm -hmm. space between applications, right. that's the utility's responsibility. And so I would say that probably most importantly, utilities come to the recognition that they need to own that space mm -hmm. and be part of solving the the problem right. at an industry level on how that, that uh, data management works there. Right, so is there a timeline for this initiative? Our project launched last fall with our, uh, with our eight utilities and it will run for about another 24 months. Okay, all right. Well, anything else you'd like to add? I don't think so. Keep tuned. We will, we will keep um, Absolutely. Tell, telling telling I folks know. about our progr progress and sharing our results. Okay. Well, Pat Brown, Pat Brown from EPRI, we appreciate you joining us today. Thanks. And for more information on this topic, you can go to hexagonsafetyinfrastructure.com. And to watch additional episodes, you can go to hxgnspotlight.com. Thanks for joining us.